looking at children's literature, understanding age, stage and height. This is lecture one in the distance learning series on the MA professional writing course. Genre and integrating genre. In the same way as we use genre in adult fiction, we have categories of genre in children's fiction. Fantasy, adventure, science fiction, thrillers or detective novels, canting, alphabet books, poetry, romance, realism, humour, instructional educational books and wordless books all come under the idea of genre. In terms of fantasy, something like Wolves in the Walls by Neil Gaiman would be a good book to look at. Pumpkin Soup by Helen Cooper. We're Going on a Bear Hunt by Michael Rosen and Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. These all come under the genre of fantasy. However, they do overlap. For instance, under adventure, we might also place Where the Wild Things Are and We're Going on a Bear Hunt. In terms of realism, look at books like The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl, or The Sad Book by Michael Rosen and illustrated by Quentin Blake. Again, in terms of humour, there's a book that may straddle two categories, Mummy Laid an Egg by Babette Cole, which could come under the genre of humour, or educational, instructional novel. And then, of course, we get fairy tales, including transfigurations. One good example might be the transfiguration of the Cinderella story in Ella's Big Chance by Shirley Hughes. So what is story for children? Well, it's very similar to story for adults, but there are a few differences. Firstly, a story is about principles, not rules. A rule says you must do it this way. A principle says this works. It's therefore about knowing something about the writing of story, pushing this to its limits and mastering the form. So writing should be well made within the principles that shape our art. Number two, Story is about creating something that generation to generation will want to read. Eternal, universal forms, not formulas. Think about the classics by Austin, Dickens, Shakespeare. And then C.S. Lewis's Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows. The Tales of Pooh Bear, etc., etc. And more recently, um, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. Thirdly, the archetypal story not the stereotypical story. The archetypal story knows a universal human experience and then wraps itself inside a unique culture-specific expression. A stereotypical story reverses this pattern and suffers the poverty of both content and form. Stereotypical stories stay at home. Archetypal stories travel. Number four, people think that a picture book is easy to write. It's short and doesn't have many words, but Getting a story down to often as little as 300 words and being able to tell that through the words and pictures, bringing the two together, requires much writing, much drafting, redrafting, editing, editing, and yet more editing and proofreading. It is often the hardest type of book to write. There are no shortcuts. Number five, a writer of picture books cannot hide behind their words like a novelist can to a certain extent. They are more like a screenwriter where... In the pictures, their work will be visual for all to see, so they have to work together, text and image integrating well. Number six, no one can teach what will sell, what won't, what will be a smash or fiasco, because no one knows. We can encourage, direct and feed back, but can't predict that a certain type of book or content will be the thing in three years' time. Number seven, when talented people write badly, it's usually because they are blinded by an idea and feel compelled to prove that idea or are driven by an emotion they must express. When talented people write well, it's because they are moved by a desire to touch an audience. You have to shape your story in a way that both expresses your vision and satisfies your child reader. The audience is a force as determining of the story design as any other element, for without it the creative act is pointless. Number eight, stories about originality, not duplication. Originality is the integration of content, setting, characters and ideas, and form, the selection and arrangement of events. 
and the distinctive choices of subject, plus a unique shaping of the telling, which requires, inspires, and mutually influences one another. If content is cliché, the telling will be cliché. If vision is deep and original, your story design will be unique. If the telling is conventional and predictable, it will demand stereotypical roles to act out well-worn behaviours. Look at Maritz's idea of the eight basic stories. Number nine, good story means something worth telling that the world or the child wants to hear. Lots of this is down to the love of writing, the love of story and storytelling, the magic of story and storytelling. The belief that your vision can be expressed only through story, and in particular story and image. The picture, picture storybook. Where the characters can be more real than people, and the fictional world more profound for the child reader than the concrete, concrete one in which they live. What about the elements of story? A beautifully told story is a symphonic unity in which structure, setting, character, genre and idea meld seamlessly together. To find their harmony, the writer must study the elements of story as if they were instruments of an orchestra, first separately, then in concert. A beautiful description of what stories for children are, I think. In writing the picture picture story book, or the illustrated book indeed, or indeed any books for children, we have to understand the form the elements that make it up, the pieces of the jigsaw, the parts of the whole, before we can tell or create this beautiful story. So what makes that story? For a story to occur, something extraordinary must happen to so upset the balance of a chosen character's life that he is then impelled to pursue a goal generated by that change in his life. In doing so, he will face obstacles and antagonistic forces until he does or does not get what he wants. He reaches a point of change from which there will be no going back, and in this way a new order is established. As well as that new order being established, of course your character can never return to what he was before. He's changed forever. Story Structure all good stories have structure. What happened to who, when it happened, why it happened, how it happened, etc. Story characters include an antagonist, a protagonist, a psychic, etc. just as in an adult novel. A story event creates meaningful change in the life situation of a character and that may happen through story values. These are the universal qualities of human experience that may shift from positive to negative from one moment to the next. For example, life and death, love and hate, truth and lies, freedom and slavery, loyalty and betrayal. A number of story scenes create sequences which form acts. These build up to a climax which creates story. So we need to understand our audience, we un need to understand who we are writing for. Age and reading age are not necessarily one and the same, although generally fiction for children follows the, second, the, the primary school um, age bands. Material could more appropriately be said to fit age and stage of development, or what we term writing the height, addressing your target audience. Age, stage and height. This is all about knowing your audience. Sensory books. They play with the child and read, to, and you can also read to the child. These are board books, nursery rhymes and novelty books. Then there are picture books. These, in terms of height, are the walking, hopping, skipping books. And if you want to read more about this, read Andrew Melrose's Write for Children. If we're reading two children of the one to three year age group, we're looking at picture books for approximately up to 400 words. The age two to five group, what we might term the hopping group, where we read to and read aloud, picture books to 1,500 words and early readers up to 1,000 words. These words are approximations and never be dominated 
by the word count. Always try and get your story out first. You can always redraft. We would then have the um, picture books in the skipping group. Picture books for perhaps the age four to seven approximated group, age range and group. These are up to 1,500 words. You then have the chapter picture books, which are up to 2,500 words. We then go on to short fiction. These are picture books up to 1,500 words. These are the read to children, for the children to read aloud and for the children to read alone. Short fiction is termed the running stage. Picture books up to 1,500 words. Serious fiction up to 6,000 words. And collected short stories up to 1,500 words. We then go on to longer fiction what we term the racing stage, where children very often read alone. Short stories, 2,000 plus words. Short novels, 12 to 20,000 words. And then the dodging stage, that 8 to 11 stage. Novels of 20 to 30,000 words. We then get to the trekking stage. Pre-teen novels, the 10 to 12 year old age group perhaps, where the word count is likely to be around 30 to 40,000 words. Again, don't be dominated by this though. Finally, we come to teen fiction, the flying age range. These readers are often quite fluent by now and these are fiction um, novels and books up to about 40,000 words. Remember, the age and reading experience are not necessarily one and the same. The school system, at least initially, grades according to age, and publishing therefore tends to track this system. Write the height should be taken as a metaphor for addressing your target audience. Always think through the stages of child development when writing. Think about the publishing houses and what they suggest. Look them up on the internet. Some suggest for three to five year olds, 100 to 500 words. 5 to 7 year olds up to 3,000 words. One particular publishing house may suggest 1,500 words maximum. They all do um, differentiate slightly. But really remember that your story should be as long as it need be if the story is complete. Get the story out, get it on paper, and we can always um, look at it later and start editing it. Word counts can be restrictive and problematic in this way. Get your story out, shape it, worry about the word count when redrafting once again. The best advice maybe is for you to remember whilst you're working that a picture book is not a little story but a big story told short. And if in doubt about those ages of readers and stages and heights, try and think of it in these terms. Your emergent readers, those that recognise letters and know a few words by sight, the rising fives or the reception class, the early readers who read 200 plus words and have those in their vocabulary, perhaps year one at school, the transitional readers who are using phonics and page clues to read new words, for instance year two, and then you get your fluent readers, those that have just gone over to junior school who are reading independently, the year three readers. If you want to know more and books I've referred to during this section, you may look at Hunt, Peter, An Introduction to Children's Literature, or Andrew Melrose's Write for Children. There's also the website wordpool.co.uk, which gives you a good breakdown on children, children's ages, stages, heights, stages of development, and what sort of fiction is appropriate for those children.